Hi, I'm Jeff Hughes. I'm the Chief of Police here in Brentwood. We're standing at the employee entrance. Every day when our employees show up for work, this is the entrance that they will use to come into the building. If they step in, the first thing that they will see to their left is the roll call room and the patrol division. So if you went down the corridor, you would uh, enter the patrol sergeant, patrol lieutenant, patrol captain's offices, uh, report writing, and anything patrol related. Behind me is the employee lobby. This is the commons area. This is the area that every employee will pass. There will be monitors on the wall here uh, that will have messages that will be updated daily. They can make an immediate right and go into the break room. The locker rooms are immediately to the right. You'll see the men's locker room and then the ladies' locker room is around the corner down the hall. We're standing in the patrol division now. Behind me are cubicles that will be occupied by the sergeants of the department. Typically, sergeants are on the road, and so they still need a touchdown area, a place where they can approve reports, a place where they can meet with employees, uh, and this is their workspace. Behind me are lieutenant's offices. Lieutenants are supervisors over the shifts, and you'll see that each lieutenant has an office here along this wall. This is our bag and tag room. This is where officers will package and submit evidence. We will have all kind of packaging supplies, uh, tape, anything that you may need to package evidence. Once that evidence is packaged, they will take and place that into a pass-through locker. They'll secure that evidence into this locker, which will be assessed by the evidence custodian from the other side when he's ready to retrieve it and put it in the evidence vault. We're standing in the sally port. If an officer makes an arrest, they would pull their patrol vehicle in through this bay door and into this spot here. We have a gate that will close and separate the vehicle bay from the sally port, which provides security for the officer who has someone in custody and perhaps somebody who may be working on a vehicle over here with an install or some kind of minor vehicle maintenance. So as an officer comes from the sally port across this hall into the booking room, we will enter into a secure airlock facility, and this is where photographs and fingerprints of arrestees will take place. There'll be a fingerprint machine here, there'll be a camera also, and there's a little interview room behind me. So if officers need to interview someone that's under arrest, then they can simply take them into this room. Okay, we have three interview rooms here within the police department. This is one of the three interview rooms and it's really a sterile room uh, with a table, a couple of chairs, and we have audio video technology in here uh, to record interviews. So I'm standing in the monitor room now. This is inside Criminal Investigations Division and it's adjacent to the interview rooms. This is where detectives or officers would sit and monitor the interviews that are being conducted. I'm standing in the digital forensics room. This is where all the magic happens. So many cases today are dependent upon computer analysis or cell phone analytics. What you see here is the furniture that will house that equipment. I'm standing in the middle of criminal investigations. To my left and to my right are detective offices. This area here in the center is a teaming area. This is where detectives will come together and discuss cases, uh, discuss any issues that they may be dealing with on any particular day. This is the administrative offices. So it's immediately off of the employee lobby and across from criminal investigation divisions. This is where the chief of police, the assistant chief of police, and all of the administrative supervisors are housed. I'm standing in the emergency management center. This is where personnel will come together in the event of an emergency. As you can see, we have a conference room table to team around. We have monitors that will be all around the room on each wall. We have dry erase boards. If we have a critical incident or a disaster in Brentwood, this is where we will come together to manage it. We're standing in a space now that will be the future home of our dispatch center. They will occupy this space later this year. There will be consoles in this area. We're on the second floor of the police facility. You can see the windows behind me, which creates a nice working environment. There will be monitors on the wall facing me. And then to my right is the communication supervisor office and a training room 
for newly hired dispatchers to be able to train in an environment that is off of the main dispatch floor. The Brentwood Police Department places a high emphasis on physical fitness. This room is the Brentwood Fitness Room. We are extremely proud to have a facility that is this nice and has this type of equipment for officers to come in and maintain their physical fitness. Thanks to the generosity of Mr. Bill Aiken, a longtime citizen of Brentwood and a huge supporter of the Brentwood Police Department, this room will be in his honor. The equipment that you see around me was funded by Mr. Aiken. This is one of two locker rooms within the police facility. We're standing in the men's locker room. And I want to show you what a wardrobe locker looks like. If you open these double doors, you'll see that we have ample storage for hanging uniforms. You have a drawer here for smaller items. And if I pull this latch here, it allows for a drawer underneath the bench. We're now on the first floor of this facility. As you come down the stairs from the employee lobby, we're now in the training commons area. This is where personnel might wait before entering the classroom, which is to my right, or going down the hallway to the firing range, the firearm simulator, or the defensive tactics room. As you enter this space, you're walking into our firing range. As you come through this doorway, you're gonna notice that we have an area for officers to clean their weapons. There'll be compressed air, and cleaning supplies. Once they complete their qualification round, they can clean their weapons before they go back on the street. As you step through this doorway, you're actually going to enter a ready room. This is where officers will stage prior to going into the firing range. There will be a sign above the door that'll tell you whether the range is in use, and there will actually be a video monitor that you can watch what's actually going on inside of the firing range. As you step through this door, you're going to see six lanes for which officers can train with their firearms. This entire wall is a ventilation system. When the firing range is in use, this wall will push air downrange and will be sucked out through a ventilation system at the far end. I'm in the defensive tactics room. This is a room that is designated solely for defensive tactics training. You'll see I've got a couple of heavy bags here over my shoulder and there are mats around the walls and on the floor. You're now entering our firearm simulation room. This is a 300 degree environment. It's a virtual simulator. And as the officer is in here encountering this scenario, the person running the simulator can control the outcome based on the officer's actions. This room is where we train on shoot and don't shoot scenarios. It's where we practice our de-escalation skills. You're now entering our crime lab. Upstairs, we saw the bag and tag area. In that area, you actually package and submit evidence for storage. This room is a crime lab where you can process evidence. So you may fingerprint evidence. You may use the fumigator, which is to my left, to superglue evidence. You may use the drying chamber to the right to dry wet or bloody clothing. Then that evidence, once it's processed, would be packaged and placed into one of the pass-through lockers and obtained by the evidence custodian from the other side. This is our evidence vault. So all evidence that is stored within this facility is stored in this room here. These cabinets roll and you have storage on either side. We're standing in the police records room. This is where all police records will be stored. We're adjacent to the public lobby. So anyone that is seeking a public record, whether it be a police report or otherwise, would come to this window and interact with the records personnel. This airlock we're standing in is just off of the public lobby. This area has limited access to the public for certain purposes. I have three report taking rooms here over my shoulder. If someone comes to file a police report, one of these rooms will be utilized to take that report. To my left is a property return window. So if property is being held by the police department and someone comes to retrieve that property, this is where they would come. We're standing in the tornado safe room. This is on the back side of the community room, the courtroom, and this room is rated for 250 mile per hour uh, winds. If we were having a community event or if we were having a session of court and we had inclement weather, a tornado warning, this room right here would be utilized for citizens 
as a tornado safe room. We're now standing in the courtroom, which also doubles as the community room. As the room is set up now, it's set up for a classroom environment, which would face toward the front of the building. We have monitors on the front wall here, and if it were a court setting, the room would be set up exactly opposite. I'm standing at the judge's bench, so in a court session, the judge would be behind this bench here with a court officer and a records clerk to either side. We're at the main entrance of the police facility. This is a vestibule off of the public lobby. During normal business hours, you would be able to enter into the public lobby and actually speak with a records clerk about any business that you might need to conduct at the police department. After hours, you have a button here with an intercom system and a camera that is accessible 24-7 by communication dispatchers. At the rear east side of our parking lot is this annex building. On the front side of the annex building is where the Williamson County Ambulance will be housed. On the back side will be two vehicle bays, obviously a vacuum, a car wash, the canine kennel, and some additional storage areas for the police department. Proverbs 28.1 says, The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. The lion has always symbolized courage. Just like the lion sculptures at the National Police Memorial in Washington, D.C., who overlook that plaza, our bronze sculpture of this lion will overlook our memorial wall here at home. To my left here is the memorial wall. And on the back side of this memorial wall is a quote that has a significant meaning for Brentwood personnel, police personnel. It's a quote that's also on our challenge coin. And that quote is, loyalty above all else except honor, which means that I will die for you, but I will not lie for you. The left side of this wall will bear the names of those people who have retired from the Brentwood Police Department. For us, it's very important to recognize their service. We wouldn't be where we're at today it were, if it were not for the people who came before us. This memorial wall bears the name of Officer Destin Legaza, who we tragically lost on June the 18th of 2020. Destin was our friend and our brother. We'll never forget him. And as we leave the building each and every day, we will see his name and it will remind us of his memory. And we will continue to serve him by serving the citizens of Brentwood. Yeah.